afternoon we're going to listen to a public lecture on the theme, the 21st Century Library Services for Higher Education, redefining the University of Cape Coast Library Services, and to be presented by Professor A. A. Alemna. I believe that we are all set to listen to a very good lecture. Professor Chairperson, I stand on the protocol that you have just established to say that, once again, on behalf of the university library, the Sam Juno Library, I welcome all of you to this public lecture, the first of, of this kind from the library point of view on the team, the 21st Century Library Services for Higher Education, redefining University of Cape Coast Library Services. Professor Chair, today marked the peak of the 2019 Library Week celebration. And I say this because the purpose of the celebration was to evaluate our current library system and re-engineer our services for the future. And our aim is to begin to, pro to provide innovative library services that will meet the needs of our users. We have invited a distinguished professor, one of the finest in our field, and I know at the right time, the Vice Chancellor, the Chair, of course, will introduce him to deliver this, this lecture. Professor Chair, I want to say that the man we have invited here today is our mentor, and most of us who went through his hands are what we are today because of him. Shall we give a hand of applause? He retired actively from service in July 2019. And those of us who are close to him, he made us aware that he is not going to be available for public events after he retired because he wants to rest. But when I approached him to do this for us, he didn't hesitate because of his love for this great university. Professor, we thank you very much. I know, again, that he had to cancel, change his flight yesterday just because of this lecture from Dubai and to make it to this lecture. Professor, we thank you. <laughs> Professor Chairperson, finally, we I have no doubt in my mind about the fact that we, we shall not live here the same. We'll live here with some new ideas, knowledge, about the way forward for our, our university library. I would like to say that the university library services benefit all of us. And we all own the library. And we should all show interest in the success of the library. If the library works, if we have a resourceful library, we all stand to benefit in terms of enhancing our academic work. Let me reiterate, as I said on Monday, that we, as management of the university library, are very much committed to ensure that we modernize the library to be able to use cutting edge technology to provide or deliver services that will meet your academic needs. I, I think that um, today's presentation, we, from the library point of view, will take the lessons learned back to our boardroom. And as not for the academic purpose, we'll make sure that some of the things that we learn from our professor, we put them to practice to ensure that our library is a better place. On that note, I thank you very much for coming again, and please relax and enjoy the lecture. Thank you very much. Today I can see that public lecture will be an interesting one. As I see the topic to be something that we all need to crave for and listen attentively to. The 21st century library services for higher education, redefining the University of Cape Coast Library Services. And I believe that by the time we finish with this one, we will know what to do with the Cape Coast University of Cape Coast Library. And to give us this public lecture is Professor A. A. Alemna, retired professor. So he's retired, but he's not tired. That is why he's sitting here. <laughs> retired professor of Library and Information Service, University of Ghana. 
I will say a little bit of bow the tar of uh, Professor A. A. Alemna, the way he wants me to say it. So it's, it's more or less a summary. So you listen to the summary so you have an idea of the man going to give the lecture. Professor Alemna is a former university librarian at BAM Library, University of Ghana. Educated at Navrongo Secondary School, University of Cape Coast. <laughs> then University of Ghana and the University of Michigan and Abo USA. Professor Alemna joined the University of Ghana as lecturer in January 1987. Some people here were not even born. He went through the ranks to be promoted for professor in July 1997. From October 1995 to September 1998, Professor Alemna was the head of the then Department of Library and Archival Studies. He also acted as Dean of the Faculty of Social Studies on many occasions between August 2000 and June 2002. He was promoted University Librarian on 1st July 2002 and moved to the BAM Library until his retirement in August 2009. He was a visiting professor at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, 1992-1993, and University of Botswana, 2000-2001. He was awarded the Commonwealth Professional Fellowship in 2004, where he spent some time visiting academic libraries in Scotland. Professor Alemna is an external examiner and assessor in a number of universities in Africa, England, and India. He received the Ghana Book Award 1998 and the Literacy Award for Most Outstanding Paper in 1997 and 1999. He is also a member of the editorial boards of a number of professional journals. He is a member of the International Association of School Librarianship, USA, Christian Librarians Fellowship, UK, and the New York Academy of Sciences. He is also a fellow of the Ghana Library Association and the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the man who is going to speak to us on the topic, the 21st Century Library Services for Higher Education, Redefining the University of Cape Coast Library Services. I just want to give you a gist of what he's going to talk about and then allow him to give us the details. According to him, the 21st Century Library Services for Higher Education, Redefining the University of Cape Coast Library Services is important. The 21st century presents a considerable measure of the needed dynamism to the library calling due to the complex nature of the present library uses. The academic libraries, for academic libraries to remain relevant to their mother institutions, the following current trends of leadership librarianship can be adopted to redefine library services library clients to adhere to copyright issues which can be done best by teaching library users information literacy skills digitized library materials use modern technologies and social media to enhance the virtual presence of library services and I hope that the students here are listening to me and they will be listening to what details will be giving you. Because for some of you, copyright means a right to copy. <laughs> and we 
we should watch it. In addition, librarians must create space for learning commons, promote personal information management, promote open access scholarship, provide editorial, academic, and bibliometric services, assess scholarly resources and impact metrics, provide support to faculty in assessing scholarly resources of libraries, and institutional assessment of scholarly research outputs amongst others. However, it must be noted that the university management has also some contributions to make towards redefining library service in the 21st century. These include, but not limited to the following. The university should make it a priority to provide adequate resources to the library, including finance, ICT infrastructure, and adequate staff training to professionally equip librarians, promote policy to publicize and market the benefits of open access to the major stakeholders, encourage faculty to provide content to populate institutional repositories, formulate a clear vision strategy and policies on ownership of research outputs, and supporting library cooperation and innovative services. In that case, I will leave the details to Professor A. A. Alemna, retired professor of Library and Information Science, University of Ghana, to continue with you. Shall we welcome <laughs> Professor A. A. Alemna? Chairman and Vice Chancellor of this great university, Registrar Osamariban Kwesi Atta II, Omanhini of Ogwa Traditional Area, Nananom, University Librarian, Provost, Deans, Heads of Department, Directors, Colleague Librarians, Distinguished Guests. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm greatly honored to be invited to deliver this lecture at the University of Cape Coast Library Week celebrations. As a proud alumnus of this great university, and also I have been telling people that I owe my umbilical cord to this university. Uh, yes, and, and I mean it seriously. It's true that I did all my work in, most of my work at Legon, but my umbilical cord is here. As a proud alumnus of this great university, and also a former senior member of the library, I feel I'm only giving back a little of the lot this university has done to my life, and especially in my academic and professional pursuits. Academic libraries have been set up mainly for teaching, research, and scholarship. However, times are changing, and academic libraries also need to change. For most university libraries, this change is often taking place side by side with the learning process. Education, training and libraries go together. We have a symbiotic relationship, the two libraries and then education. Therefore, where one goes beyond the other, then there is an imbalance. And that is why when teaching methodology is changing, educational provision is changing, then library services, library products, library facilities must also change. The 21st century presents a considerable measure of needed dynamism to the library due to the complex nature of present library users. The present library users are very electronic addicts. Print materials are virtually going out of uh, the way. So library providers must also learn to cope up with what our users need. When users 
seem to be far ahead of us, then our relevance is no longer important. That is why we think that we need to re redefine our services, service provision, not only in this university library, but generally in all university libraries. Unfortunately, academic libraries in Ghana still offer traditional services, which require phys the physical presence of the user. And this should not be maintained because there are other ways of doing things. Especially with the introduction of the digital age, so many things can happen on the net. And it is for us as academic librarians to distinguish between the good and the bad. Unfortunately, professionalism without adaptation to changes in the contemporary world is not something to be proud of. We are professionals, yes, but we must also learn to adapt to change. Professional librarians must therefore embrace the challenge and taking of new roles. And some of the new roles we are going to discuss as following. We, the chairman has uh, gratefully given us most of this, so I'll skip them and touch, touch on them individually. The first role is research data management. This requires that we as academic li librarians are able to support research data through the research cycle, life cycle. That is right from the beginning of the research, the field process, the writing process, the publication process. What is happening now is that we are often uh, uh, more concentrated and concerned with the end process, which is the publication process. If we are to redefine our services, then we must begin with the researcher through the research process and not only at the end process. So generally, we require a high level of interaction with researchers and also working with others, which means that we should know the needs of researchers and be able to provide for them and also inform researchers what we have so that they can come and also obtain it from us. The next one is the development of institutional repositories. Institutional repositories pl play a major role in advocacy and management. If we are able to get a very good inst institutional repository, the advantage is that we digitize our materials and expose them to all users. And it, the institutional repositories also help us in sharing resources because we get to know, because the materials are now in an electronic format, we get to know what other libraries have, what other users will need, and this encourages sharing of resources. Then also, we need to, as the chairman rightly said, we need to get to know copyright policies in order to educate our users. IFLA defines copyright as a person's exclusive right to authorize certain acts, such as reproduction, publication, public performance, adaptation, etc., in relation to one's original work of authorship. It is important to state that the issue of copyright is very, very relevant in our universities these days. So much plagiarism and piracy is taking place that if it is uncontrolled, I am aware that there are various softwares to check all these things, but some escape the software, and therefore we need to educate people. In fact, there are people who do not even know that they are doing the wrong thing. And we as librarians are trained on the right thing. So it is for us to distinguish between what is right to copy and what is wrong to copy. Then information literacy. Information literacy has been defined as the ability to recognize when information is needed, locate the information, evaluate the information, and use the information effectively to solve a problem. The important thing about information literacy is that it can be used even after the students leave this university because it is a general search process. And if we are able to teach our students information literacy, which I know has begun in this university already, it helps a lot even in their future development. One fundamental role of the library in the digital era 
is to promote and equip its users with information literacy skills. Very, very important. Digitization is the process of converting our print materials into digital, uh, digitized format. This is also important because these days, electronic facilities seem to attract more attention, especially with the younger generation. And if we are able to digitize all our resources, or at least most of our resources, into electronic formats, such as e-books, e-journals, we can have better usage than the present usage. The next one is the use of mobile technologies. Most libraries these days, especially in the advanced countries, are using mobile technologies to propagate what is in the library. This is because most users now have what we call smartphones. And with smartphones, we can publicize our materials, even search the library catalog, contact librarians, and access information without physically going to the library. So we need to start using mobile technologies in our library service provision if we want to redefine our library services in this university. Then game libraries. Previously, game libraries were associated with public libraries and school libraries. We always thought it was for children to play games in the library. However, it has been realized that even some teaching methodologies some lectures, games are used in methodological teaching. Therefore, as I said earlier on, if we have a symbiotic relationship between libraries and the teaching faculty, then we have to start the creation of games and as part of our collection, video games as part of our collection in the libraries. The application of social media is also very important. Once again, the typical example is the Facebook. It can be used to market our library materials and services very easily because of the present use of smartphones. We should also be able to use social media to market our libraries and information services. Then is the use of learning commons. It is a common feature these days in all universities, whether public or private, that lecture halls are choked. Lecture uh, uh, dormitories and halls of residence are all choked. So the only place that one can have decent uh, learning process to take place is the library. And the library has opening and closing hours. So the suggestion here, if you are to redefine our services, is to change the paradigm completely have a section of the library which will be known as the learning commons, especially as an initial stage for postgraduates, which will have a 24-hour service where people can go. And in fact, in some places, there are even catering services in the learning commons. So you can sit there in the morning, do your private work, everything, have your lunch, do your work again for even 24 hours. And this must be encouraged because, as I said earlier on, halls, of residents are choked up, classrooms are choked up, space facilities everywhere are choked up. So the learning commons becomes the next, or the library becomes the last resort for the average student in every university. We must also help to promote personal information management. In our field, there's something we call information explosion or information pollution. There is so much information around that people do not know what to keep and what to throw away. As information professionals, we should be able to help individuals to know where to, which information to archive or which information to delete, which is correct and which is wrong in our personal information management. We also need to promote open access scholarship, especially with our faculty. Open access helps the faculty to have access to materials which they would otherwise not have had. At the same time, open access also helps them to have an avenue of getting materials which, uh, they, which they have but others do not know. 
So we need to promote open access because of the dual uh, solutions. First of all, we get to know what others have, others to get to know what we have. And this will enhance scholarship and information sharing. We also, if we need to redefine our services, we must get into what is called impact metrics, especially for academic researchers. These days of predatory journals, people do not know where to publish and what and uh, where not to publish. We, through our training, know the qualities of journals. Through our training, we know which are predatory and which are not predatory. So it is for us to inform our users by checking the impact of some academic journals and alerting them which of them are more relevant to their work and which are not relevant to their work. A note must be taken that the existence of predatory journals in academia is getting terrible these days. There are now journals that require that you pay some money and get published. A colleague, I give an example of a colleague in my former department who in less than a day and with $300 was able to get a paper published and then the publication was sent electronically to the person for promotion purposes. You can just tell that this was a fake. Uh, it didn't go through the normal editorial process. But we know this, and it is for us to alert our colleagues in academia to know where to publish and where not to publish. Then bibliometrics is also important in our redefining of our services. We need to determine which journals to publish in, as well as identify new and emerging areas of research. Fortunately for us, as librarians, our training covers every subject from archaeology to zoology. So it is easier for us to advise anybody across the field where to publish and where not to publish because of our training. We also have to provide access to scholarly resources. And this will enable faculty members to determine which materials are worth even publishing in. Once again, our training ensures this because we have what we call impact factors. We can determine the impact factor of every journal. We have a way of determining the impact factor. So if you want to publish, we can use the impact theory to determine the factors and notice whether you are getting into the right journal or the wrong journal. We also need to provide advice on the acquisition department. And here is our own internal ones. All those I've said earlier on are for the users, that is students and academics. But for us, as professionals, we need to know which materials to provide even uh, in the library. So it's a learning process for us, even as librarians. It's a learning process for us when we use quality indicators to determine which materials to acquire, whether electronic materials or print materials. Mr. Chairman, all what I said earlier on are general things that are happening around the globe on new developments in information provision in libraries. So for us at the University of Capus, how do we get into all this? How do we get into all this so as to redefine our services? The first thing we have to do, the first thing we have to do is to make sure that we have adequate formal education. The first thing is to change our personal skills. That is, our training aside, we also need to have skills in co collaboration. You recall that a lot of the things I said are between us and users, us and staff and all that. We need to have the ability to collaborate. Otherwise, all what we have said earlier on cannot take place very well. 
We also need communication skills. That is both oral and then verbal. We need to be able to explain things to our users very easily. We also have to be very enthusiastic about our work. We need to let our users know that we love our work and we can do it very well. Similarly, we must adapt to change. As the users' needs are changing, we must also change our information provision and information services. So we need to adapt to changes and not hang on to the old ways of doing things always. We need to adapt. We must also learn to lobby. Lobbying skills are very necessary because a lot of the things I've said involve financial outlays, which may be difficult to get if we cannot lobby. Then also we need to be very personable. Personable in terms of our attitudes, our personality, everything. We need to be personable in order to carry out these functions well. Then we come to our training. And I, I've always told my students that the curriculum of the library school cannot give you all the training that you need. We are limited in number of semesters, number of years, and all that. So when you leave, it is for you to move from the formal education through other types of training, such as on the job training as you are working, self-directed learning. These days, there's what we call webinars instead of seminars. You can sit at work and take courses on the web. Some of them are even certificated courses on the web. You can do this. And then continuing professional education training, such as seminars, workshops, uh, conferences, and all that. And one thing I would advise my colleagues is that we do not always have to wait for sponsorship for some of these. Conferences, seminars, and all that, we may have to sacrifice some of our own monies to go for this because they enhance our training and they enhance the profession. So staff training is very important. We also need to develop partnerships on campus. A lot of the things I've said go beyond the library. Some of them involve teaching staff. Some involve ICT staff. Some involve the, computers, the computer staff and all that. We need to develop partners, partnerships with all these group of people so that we can collaborate and get assistance from them anytime we need the assistance. Then we need to use our campu campus websites very, very much. Most of the websites have links to the library or the library may have its own website. In this case, it is easy to use the website as a tool to promote what materials we have in the library. We can even use the website effectively for assessing information resources in the library. So we need to use our websites more than, even if we are doing it so now, we need to use it more than we are doing at the moment. Then content management. A lot of locally produced materials are not found elsewhere except in our local situations. They may be publications, they may be artifacts, they may be museum materials and all that. We, and if we want to redefine our services, we need to go beyond the textbooks, print, electronic and all that, and start collecting these local materials, having a special section for them, to the extent that we may even be the only library to have uh, such a collection, thereby creating a niche in that area as a reference service for other people. Then also the cooperation with the teaching faculty. Here, I often recommend that we form something called liaison librarians. Every faculty, every school, every college should have a librarian on its faculty board so that that librarian becomes the link between the faculty, the school, the college, and the library. A mediator between the school, the college, and the faculty so that what is needed by the faculties 
what is needed by the schools, what is needed by the colleges, can be provided for in the library. Because that link, at the moment, if that link is not there, then we are falling apart. We, are, we need that link because the liaison librarian becomes a bridge between the library and the faculty and the schools and colleges. We must also start using our email very well as tagging services. Fortunately for most universities these days, students have personal emails, staff have personal emails. So all what we do is to create what is often referred to as the list self, where we can target individuals. That's why we call it uh, alert and targeting services. On their needs, new things that have come, new publications, journals, even electronic materials, so that we alert them. In doing this, we are able to propagate the library resources, we are able to market the library's resources, and we are also creating a new image for the library. People who used to think of us as just uh, reactive, sitting down and waiting for things to happen, will now know that we are being proactive and providing materials beyond the confines, the walls of the library. There is now a new move to provide archives in libraries. And the University of Ghana BAM Library is a typical example. This is because the two, which were formerly separate, archives and records management as against libraries, were formerly distinct uh, features. Now they are gradually merging. So it may be necessary, Mr. Chairman, for our university librarians to acquire some knowledge in archives and records management so that there can be small archive sections in all the university libraries, and then our materials can be better archives for future records. Once again, the institutional repository comes in here. We know we have some, and I'm aware that we have challenges in managing our institutional repository, especially with populating the institutional repository. Most of it is because our academic colleagues, our teaching colleagues, colleagues are afraid of what to put there and how people will assess it. This can be done by giving them a very good education on the appropriate description of what will be there and then what requirements are there so that they do not get scared with the polluting of uh, population of the institutional repositories. We also need to publicize and market our library materials. There are some materials people scarcely know about. And from what we have said so far, there are several ways of marketing these materials, especially with the use of smartphones and our other facilities. So we need to, through marketing and publicity, to let pat uh, patrons be aware of the services we provide and the collections that we have. And this will go a long way to boost customer satisfaction and enhance the value and perception, which means even our own image and our status will be improved, and our services would also be uh, taken seriously uh, care of. We need to network and collaborate. That is why uh, at the beginning I said that we need collaboration skills. And this collaboration can be internationally with uh, these organizations relating to our profession or even individual membership, which most of us do not take seriously. Individual membership of these international library associations open up avenues of resource uh, sharing. They also open up avenues of meeting colleagues and discussing new issues, avenues of even sharing resources. So we need to make sure that as individuals, we are members of international library associations. The consultancy part of it is what is new in our field. Interestingly, we are a professional group that has a lot of avenues for information related products. We need to reinvent our, uh, ourselves these days and try into getting into consultancy, information consultancy. I'm aware that as professional librarians, we are not properly trained in this way. But we may need some reorientation in order to come to speed 
with the tenants of the consultancy environment. There is a lot of consultancy in the information profession. Then also is fundraising. We seem to depend so much on our, our institutional support. Most of our budgets coming from our institutions. However, the institutions themselves are getting little or even sometimes not, nothing from our grandmother, the government. So if the grandmother is not providing to the mother, then the baby has very little to get from the mother. So we need to do something about fundraising, getting people to pledge on annual basis to acquire some materials for us, or even in some cases, deciding to support some sections of the library in, in the provision of materials. This can be done. We are not doing it at the moment, but we need, and that's why we are trying to learn how to redefine our uh, services. This is an area that we need to take seriously. Mr. Chairman, this is for my colleagues in the library. I mean, what we said earlier on is for my colleagues in the library. But Mr. Chairman, you are not going free. There is something for you too. We need to provide for our library services. We are aware that there are challenges in the funding of the university system. But we also need to equip if we want to move into the 21st century, we need to equip our library services. And most of it will depend on what you do for us in terms of funding, in terms of staff training, open access, especially faculty. You need to help us to educate lecturers that populating the uh, institutional repository, for example, is to their advantage. At the moment, we're having challenges with that one. And also open access to publicize the materials for faculty, students, and the other stakeholders. Then also, the major challenge of bandwidth. Mr. Chairman, you will notice that most, if not all, the issues I've discussed so far involve uh, using electronic systems. And these electronic systems are consumers of bandwidth. Therefore, I will propose that this be incorporated into the objectives of the university, that the library would have a separate bandwidth so as to be able to provide these materials for its users. We also need to uh, formulate a clear vision and a strategy of our research output, what is required and what is not required, so that open access, and I'm glad that this week also has a, a day for open access. It's very, very necessary. Continuous training for library staff must also include the use of Web2 and the social media application. Then also, we need to support library cooperation and innovative services. Mr. Chairman, my conclusion. I'm saying that library professionals need to be savvy we need to be knowledgeable in our work. And the most productive way of doing this is to keep up with the changes that are taking place. That is most of the issues that I've discussed so far. It is paramount that we ensure that staff are always abreast with the latest skills needed to satisfy users. We must therefore have a robust and an effective way of deter determining the training needs of the library. These systems, when put in place, will ensure that librarians are always up to date with requisite skills and knowledge which is required for the 21st century librarian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Shall we give another hand of applause to <laughs> Professor Allen? I can see Mr. Nchamesa around. He's been a pillar in the library for a very long time. And thank you very much, Mr. Nchamesa. And of course, Pro Professor Youngson is also here. Thank you very much, Professor Youngson, for coming. I know that um, 
the MC will mention other dignitaries here. But the things that today we have heard from Professor Alim is something that we need to take seriously. And it comes to us as administrators, comes to the librarians in the library, comes to the students, it comes to faculty. All of us have had something to learn from this public lecture. And I think that we must start looking at where we need to improve and really improve. And we must be measuring our progress. In times past, we've said that you need to pass through the library and the library must pass through you. Today, we are hearing that. The passing through the library and the library passing through you can be physical or virtual. It can be virtual. Some, some people have never gone to the library, either physical or virtual. I'm wondering whether you're a student or whether you're an academic. Nothing to do with the library. So as for you, the information you get, the all fake information. Nobody authenticating the information you are receiving. And you sh we should check it. We should check it. If for any reason you can't go to the library physically, you should be able to go to the library virtually. And so those of you here, especially the students, you must remember this physical presence is compulsory is not required if you are not going to take something from the library or whatever if you're just going to look at materials you should be able to get to the library so we should be able to position our library such that students are able to get into the library from wherever they are sitting and I think that for now that is the case, librarian, or not so. Ah. It means that you might not have tried it. Try it and see whether what the librarian is saying is true or false. As for the repositories, um, we want the academics to contribute to those academics. The works that we have the things that we have we have produced and published. The thesis. One, one time I was looking at the ETAC platform, I saw that people were talking about the thesis not being there. I said, it cannot be. So check with the librarian. Everything we produce in here of quality must be there in the library repository. So it means also that the librarian, we need to go looking around to see what is there being put in there and then we get them there. So we as academics, we have a lot to do with this. You see, we live in an information age where the information we have is so vast that you cannot remember all of them. You just can't remember all of them. And actually, there are many things you don't need to remember. There are certain things you need to remember, you know. Because if we ask you what is your age, and say, uh, maybe let me look through my diary and see when I was born, everybody will be thinking that there's something wrong with you. Or, or when we ask you what is your name, say, my, my name, let, let, let me check through the diary and see what my name is. But there are also a lot of information you don't need to keep in memory. Because you must have a way of just looking for it and retrieving it and using it. And we have been told by the speaker that we must learn to do this. And this goes to all of us, including you, the students. So in that case, information literacy, we have been told, is extremely important for us. So when I say information literacy, then you are running away. You are running away. The very thing which is very important for you, which is your which which is your certificate before the certificate. 
you are running away. Yes, you are running away. Information literacy. Oh, information literacy. Well, what is it? Oh, forget. No, it's not forget. It's remember. So those of you who didn't pay much attention to information literacy, can you go back? Can you go back and learn the thing properly? Somebody goes to the library, even the physical library, he doesn't even know what to do. Just, just moving around the library just like that. And asking what I'm looking for, so and so. And you don't even know where to start from. If you're a student here or a student elsewhere, I want you to remember this and take it away. That you must know the library from a distance through your mobile phone. So he's also saying that try and get a smartphone. See, the kind of phone you are using can't take you to the library. Can't. So also watch it. Uh, use a smartphone. No, not an ex We're not talking about expensive phone, but a phone which is smart. <laughs> Some of us are not phones are not smart. And learn also to use the phone and maximize the use of the phone. When you want to give somebody your phone number, he's taking a pen and he's writing it down. Ah! You are writing the number down. In fact, some people have a, a, a book with numbers inside. Anytime they want to make a call, they go and take the book and they're looking for it. How can it be? Phones are not to be used like that at all. Mm. So that goes to all of us. And of course, Mr. Chairman mentioned, uh, Mr. Speaker mentioned learning commons. So we've created learning commons in our libraries, all right? We are going there from here. Very good. We've created a learning commons. So shall we give a hand to the library? The librarian can say, okay, can we create learning commons? Yes, we can create learning commons. And therefore, we got somebody to support us. And then the university management also give money to be added. We give so much money to be added. We're going to give more in 2020. to make our library a presentable one. I went to the University of Helsinki and they said, look, one place we want you to see, want you to see is our library. So let's go to the library. And you know, the library is not on the university campus. The library is in town. Actually, underneath it is a, is a shopping mall. <laughs> and we went, we climbed to the library and we saw the research commons and everything. It was great. And we must duplicate some of these things in our own university. I say duplicate all. So go see what is really interesting and catchy and come and do yours like that. Of course, it simply means that when we create a research commons, we must see people come to sit there and have their discussions and so on and so forth. Now the research commons is created and then you don't go there. So this is to the students. Go and sit there. You see, it's free. They don't charge anything, you know. We like free things all the time. So this one is free. Whether we accept it or not, faculty must understand that they are predatory journals. Some people disbelieve that they are these predatory journals. But there are predatory journals. Quick turn around, isn't it? You submit your paper this morning. He said, can you pay $400? Say yes, uh, uh, $400. Yes, 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 yes. So you pay. And uh, by now you've submitted the paper. By one, they say, oh, it's published. They say, wow, that's great. You should say, wow, that's predatory. That's predatory. It doesn't go through any system at all. All your errors are there. When you read your paper, you, all your errors are there. Even the grammatical ones are there. Nobody has done any proofreading. 
is published. And there are journals like that. There are also publishers like that, predatory publishers. They publish anything. All that you need to do is go and give it to them. And I think that, you see, the internet has helped us in many ways. And on the internet, there is the good, there is the bad. People are also trying to help you. In helping you, you are not helping yourself. In somebody helping you, sometimes you yourself, you are not helping yourself. I once saw on the net a website. It says, we take your class.com. We take your class.com. I know that somebody is writing that to see what is there so that you go and then you see, we take your class.com. Anything you want to do, all your assignments, you give it to them, they do for you. And they charge you. So you're submitting an assignment that you have not done yourself. Even with thesis, we took your class.com. You submit your topic, and within the week, they've written all your, the thesis for you. Where is Japan? I put Ghana. And you are gone. So you are not contributing to knowledge. You are not. The advice to the UCC librarians, they have been noted. Staff training we will help you to train, but also help yourself to train. As we support you, you support yourself as well. It's, it's both ways. Mm, it's both ways. And I like the issue about liaison librarians. I think that is something that the librarian must take up with the provost of the colleges. Let's take this one up and see how we can establish liaison librarians. Yes. And this issue about alerting and tagging services, I think that we should begin by January 2020. Librarian, hmm. we are talking about alert and tagging services. By January 2020, we should see your show. In, in this in this in this area okay and then of course finally you also told the university management something to do we hear you we've noted that we shall do it <laughs> and by doing it also we will need the help of the students so i'm happy that students are here currently we have four stm we pay two million Ghana cities a year to Vodafone and Main One to supply us with bandwidth. Students IT support only amount of sixty-six Ghana cities per year only amounts to something around thousand two hundred one point two million. We have to find eight hundred thousand ourselves to add to that. And that is for only bandwidth. All other things. So whatever the students are paying can even buy bandwidth. Every other thing that we are doing, infrastructure, etc., the, the students don't contribute. So we have to pay infrastructure. We have to pay everything. Even for them to pay for access is a problem. Now if you have to take your phone and go on the net, there must be a bandwidth for you to use. If you go to the telecos, you know how much they charge for bandwidth. It's too expensive. And yet when you contribute a little, everybody contributes a little, and we put them together. We're able to do that. For us to keep on using internet on campus, we've been told that we may have to move from 2 million Ghana cities to 2.6 million. Yes. And if that is going to happen, it simply means that we ourselves must contribute a lot more. When it comes to contribution, people don't want to contribute at all. But when you compare yourselves to your sister universities, you can see that they pay far more. I'm hoping that as we begin to use more bandwidth, we'll see the need to pay because next academic year, 
we will have to distribute bandwidth to students. When your bandwidth is finished, come buy bandwidth from the university. That is what is going to happen. Because we cannot continue to take IGF and use it to supplement even the buying of bandwidth. It's, not, it's never done anyway. So you will begin to buy bandwidth from us, and then you can use it. We're also hoping to improve our services to the students. There are a few issues here and there, and make sure that seamlessly we can go to the library virtually and do our work in our rooms as the speaker said, we, from the teaching to the learning, so the learning is the for the students to do. And therefore, you can sit down and look at what you're supposed to do. Virtually go into the library, look for your books, and then you learn. It makes things very simple and interesting. For, th for those of us who have the mobile phones and we don't know how to use it apart from texting messages, WhatsApp. Please learn to use your mobile phone because from now onwards we are going to the library through the mobile phone. Thank you very much, <laughs> Professor. God bless you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, your mention of contribution reminds me of a song titled NCNC. What it means is that no contribution. Mr. Chairman, permit me to acknowledge the following. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we just heard our chairperson, Professor Yosef Gate Ampia. We also have in our meeting this afternoon our registrar, Mr. J. K. Nyan, a hard and indefatigable librarian, Dr. Mark Anthony Cobbler. We also have close to him former Dean, Faculty of Art, UCC, Professor J. B. Afo. Then we have Professor J. N. Buampon Provost, College of Health and Allied Sciences. <laughs> Professor Moses J. Egan, Provost Kans. <laughs> and introduced earlier, Pro VC, Professor Kobna Yangson. And also to grace this afternoon's uh, lecture is our former librarian, Mr. Ntiaminsa. <laughs> librarian KNUST is here, Mr. Jose Kufo. <laughs> librarian CCTU, Reverend Wilfred Baini. This afternoon is afternoon. Accra Technical University, we have Mr. Tufo. We have the librarian from Ghana Great Company, Great Co. in our midst. <laughs> Professor Godwin Awabel, Director Dapka, is also present. And then we have a He is a man in Ogwa traditional area. Nana Kweku Enu, Chief of Kukwado. And Nana Fatuho is also here. We also have this afternoon in our midst our own Dean of Students, Professor Mafu. And then the one that we are, I'm learning from, his feet, Major Retired Kofi Babe Tomb Director, DPA. 
shall we take this announcement? This young man doesn't want me to go. We also have Professor Ernest Lai Okole, Dean Graduate School. And then there's a rep from Ep School. I don't know whether I got it right. Mr. Chairman, let me make this announcement and then Osofu Otibu will pray for us to disperse. Invited guests are invited to the library uh, to visit the newly created Reset Commons. Mm -hmm.